Hey, what's up guys? Well, in the past I've talked about how much I am a pack rat. And so this video is going to be me throwing some crap out. Um, you know, a lot of people know that I'm into knives. If you watch the channel, most likely you know that knives are my favorite hobby, although it's amongst a sea of hobbies and sometimes can be lost. Um, but knives truly are my biggest passion. And I have so much knife literature that I, I save everything, every magazine, every catalog, everything I read, pamphlets, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I have it for reference, okay, so I can go back in the future, and I literally have hundreds of uh, issues of Tactical Knives Magazine, Knives Illustrated, um, it's just, it's ridiculous. And all these catalogs from looking at old models to discontinued, seeing what their original specs were, their prices, all that kind of stuff. And I, I've accumulated quite a library of, uh, of knife stuff. Now, what we're looking at here is a suitcase, um, and this is one of many, and I have to just get rid of this stuff. I'm not going to film everything I'm throwing out, but I figured it'd be a fun little video and show you some of the old stuff I have. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. This is just me throwing some, some knife crap out, but I thought it'd be interesting to film because there are some older catalogs in here, and uh, who knows what I'll find. I really don't know what's in here, to be honest. The first thing I found, which I thought was kind of funny, was my old receipts when I was in high school. Um, I took graphics arts, art class for, uh, for two semesters. And uh, for one of my projects, I printed these receipts. You could see that was my old uh, e uh, email. <laughs> Great big hairy bud. Yes, obviously, you know my past. Uh, at icqmail.com. And you know what? I'm not even sure if that's still active, to be honest. I have to go check it, because who knows? Maybe I would assume after a certain amount of time not being used, it would just be deleted. But anyway, I made these full receipts, and I sold knives in school. Not like physically in school, but... Of course, I said the word, and everyone, you know, just go over to Jeff, you know, Smitty's house, people call me, and uh, pick up their knives. And I have actual, like, professional receipts, and I, and I kept the, the copies for me, so I can, you know, keep it for my records and stuff. I just thought that was fascinating. So, so I thought I'd, uh, I'd show this to you. And even back then, I very much thank you. <laughs> Enjoy the rest of your day. Anyway, so yeah, that's something I don't use anymore. I got lots of them. Um, hmm, 2004 Spyderco catalog. So a quick little gander in here, see if we have anything. Ooh, right off the bat. Well, there's the World Trade Center um, commemorative knife, and we have the uh, the Catcherman. It's a pretty cool, kind of folding fillet knife. Let's see the trainers. I actually love all the trainers. Benchmade Spyderco, they're pretty cool. I'm sure we can find all kinds of stuff in here. Uh, when the Dodo is in production still. The C80. Love it. Absolutely love it. The Warren Thomas uh, Karambit. Very cool Spyderco. Love that one. Never had that one. Never owned it. I was able to handle one because I was uh, someone shipped it to me to ship to a friend. It was like this whole thing. Um, the Gunting Knives. These are pretty cool. Uh, a whole philosophy of knife defense with those knives. But interesting stuff. So yeah, here's the uh, one of the native, one of the generations of the native, and also in stainless, and then native three in the bottom. Anyway, all kinds of stuff in here. The Meerkat was a very cool knife, very interesting uh, closing mechanism on that one. Anyway, 2004, sorry for saying garbage. I get these every every single year. That was my old address, 60 Overlook Road, West Milford, New Jersey. So if you want to be a stalker, I'm sure you can look me up, <laughs> find something out. But nothing exciting to find out. Anyway, here we go. Um, a Browning pamphlet. Another Cold Seal Special Projects. This was a July 4th. There was another address I lived at. 29 Stanley Street, Franklin. There's a Joyzy boy. Joyzy. Alright, another Special Projects. We have a Tops knife uh, pamphlet here. Black and white. Old school. CRKT. This looked like a calendar for a minute. I thought, oh, I can use a calendar. Well, obviously, I wouldn't be able to use an old one. Wouldn't be accurate. There's a big blowed up uh, features page on the M16, um, 13SF, at, and the uh, 14SF. All right, big old fat browning catalog. Mostly clothes, gloves. We got a Boker catalog. I like Boker knives. I do. There's a select few that I really like. One of my first really nice knives was a Boker Top Lock. And it was fantastic and I cut my thumb wide open with it. And maybe I'll tell that story in the future. Makes for a fun story. 
But uh, yeah, Boker was kind of like my first. I'm not talking about today's Magnum series. They're like the cheapo line. The Boker Top Lock too was like the crap back in the day. All right, way before all this other stuff we have today. Anyway, a crap load of A.G. Russell magazine uh, catalogs rather. I love A.G. Russell. It's pretty cool. Someone messaged me not too long ago. Said they live right down the block from them. You see those uh, cheetahs on the front page there. Very cool uh, slip joint. Even though it's a locking, it's a slip joint pattern. Let's see, fall 2003, spring 2003, late fall 2004, late summer 2004, another one from 2004, Christmas 2003, beautiful uh, William Henry knives in the front there, looks like some uh, mammoth scales, very, very neat stuff, oh, love it, all right, 2003 Spider Co, catalog, it's pretty cool, how they lined up, oh, my phone never fails. All right, I'm back. <clears throat> you know how the phone goes. People want to call you. So anyway, 2003 Spider Co. I was just saying before, I believe, um, that I think it's pretty cool that um, they put all their folders in a picture like this to form an overall logo. Pretty neat. Let's see, 2003. See if we got anything special in here. Oh, the spot. I remember them. Those uh, neck knives. Uh, let's see. Bill Morin fixed blade. Uh, I see a lot of people get this knife and they like it, but for most, for the most part, they're looking to trade it. I see a lot of these for trade all the time. Oh, I guess I flipped those before because I remember the Dodo. And of course, the Cricket and Stainless. <laughs> Such an awesome knife. Um, I would love a carbon fiber Cricket. But anyway, that's that. All right, Kershaw knives. The ET. I think I did a review on this knife. Pretty funky. Uh, external toggle is what it stood for. Very interesting knife. Look, it looks like a ripcord here. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Carabiner ones. Doo -doo -doo. Hmm. The Kershaw Vapor and Storm. Um, the Vapor's another knife I see a lot. Uh, I like my Vapor, and for the most part, you can get it for like 10 bucks now. Sometimes Walmart still carries them. Uh, and you know what, for 10 bucks, it's a fantastic knife. It really will beat most $10 knives. My biggest gripe with the Vapor, besides being bead blasted and always rusting on me, you know, if I didn't oil it right away, was the fact that the thumb stud is a pyramid shape and it was very uncomfortable to open. Never liked it. There's the blur. Never had a blur. I know it's real popular, but I never had one. Kershaw Blackout and Whirlwind. Bunch of leak models. I used to have a whole crap load of the uh, the Ken Onion stuff. I mean, I had probably 17 or 18 different leaks. I mean, all the smoke ones. You see, they, they have the fish on this one, the trout or whatever. Um, I had the rainbow tie finish. I had uh, an all black one. I had a carbon fiber one. I had the D2 version. I had the 150, or excuse me, the um, S30V composite blade. All kinds of stuff. And then the same thing with the uh, the chives. I only had a few um, of the scallions, but I pretty much... Pretty much had all the chives and all the leaks at one point. So anyway, Kershaw, spend too much on that. Here's the price guide for all the stuff you just saw. Okay. Razor's Edge. Fantastic sharpening system. I mean, basically, it's just some stones and a guide. But you can see how this guide works. It runs, uh, you know, right across your stone like that. You keep it flat. This thing right here in the background is a, an edge tester, which is really interesting. Um, I always wanted one. Never had one. Uh, if I ever get one in the future, I'll certainly make a video on it. But they had some beautiful kits in here. <clears throat> I was always interested in, uh, by the way, this guy had, he was famous because he had videos of him shaving with an axe. And if I ever get, uh, uh, you know, a nice axe, that's something I really, really want. But that's for down the road is a really nice, like, um, hand forged axe or hatchet. Would absolutely love that. And you know what? If I ever get one, I will shave with it. But they have some beautiful stones in here. Some nice uh, kits. I'm way too close here, aren't I? <laughs> I don't know if you can see anything I'm showing you. But pretty cool. So that's it. Got another one of these. Doo -doo -doo. Magnum. You know what? They're really not bad for the money. You know, they're cheap for a reason, but still, not too shabby. Some throwing knives there. Okay, the point. Oh, I got two more things here. This was um, basically a, uh, uh, a custom knife rag. And you'll see that there's a little bit on... Uh, 
um, some custom knives, as well as some different production knives. There's some Remington slip joints in here. But they had all kinds of knives for sale. It's almost like a classified thing, but it was an actual like store. But they had used knives, new knives. It was pretty cool. I used to get this uh, quite regularly. Let's see, another Boker. This is the Spring 2003. Special Projects, Cold Steel. They make a, a fun catalog to look at. They put a lot, of, a lot of time and effort into their advertisements. I think that's quite obvious to most of you now. Lynn Thompson is a marketing genius. And a lot of people love cold steel knives. You know, there's nothing wrong with cold steel. I just, it's hard for me for someone to like cold steel and only like cold steel. You know, they'll get like a Voyager or they'll get a Spartan or something and then that's all they like. There's so many knives out there. You have to broaden your horizon. But some people just say here, cold steels are pretty good and they get one and that's it. And then they badmouth everything else. <laughs> the text. <coughs> <coughs> Set my throat there. So anyway, bench maids. I used to always get these. Um, I never liked how they were long like this. I like a regular magazine, but it's pretty cool to look back at some of the old ones, the bench mites, the autos. Um, you know, flip through. That's weird. <laughs> I'm picking up audio from something in my speaker system. No idea what it is. Ooh, look at this. These were the uh, some of the gold class stuff. This was the Benchmade model 3102 with these carbon fiber inserts. An amazing bow saw. You get a pretty penny for that if you had it today. Let's see, this was, what year is this from? 2003. Um, of course, let's look at the BN4X series. A lot of people ask me about this stuff, you know? Unfortunately, a lot of you guys out there who like, who like ballast songs, you're kind of late in the game. I mean, uh, I'd say five years ago or so. There were so many different awesome models, and here's just a few examples. When I say BM, uh, BM 4X series, I mean for something. In this case, the 43, which has the, uh, the Bowie blade, or Bowie, depending on how you want to say it. The 42, which has the standard Weehawk, which is, of course, the you know most known production battle song out there. The 47, which is a, a Tanto, or Tanto, which is absolutely amazing to look at and amazing to use. It's hard to flip. It is blade heavy. Then we have the 46 here, which is a spear point. The back had a very thin taper. It was not sharpened, but believe me, if you're doing uh, ricochets, you would cut yourself up. I had a 4601, which uh, was a D2 version of the 46. And then, <laughs> I'm telling you guys, this was by far the most underrated battle song, production battle song there ever was, was the 42 SS, okay? This was by far my favorite Benchmade production battle song ever that I've personally owned, okay? And basically, it was a 42, but instead of titanium handles, it had stainless steel handles. And believe it or not, it's more expensive to work with stainless steel because it's harder to cut on the machines. Um, titanium is a much more expensive material, but in the long run, when you're making you know hundreds of knives, if not thousands of them, the bits on the you know the cutting bits and the machinery and all the maintenance on that becomes more expensive. So it seems kind of funny that their regular production line was titanium, and they did like a special run in stainless steel. That was something that was like, ooh, special. You would think it'd be the, you know, the opposite. You'd think that stainless steel would be common and then, ooh, titanium would be special. But no, it was the exact, exact opposite of what you think it would be. And the 42 SS was a fantastic knife. I would uh, probably give my left nut for another one. Um, God knows I'm not using it. You only need one at a time, right? So anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, the trainers, okay. First, you have a BM40T. Uh, and then on the background you have the BM40TR, which was the red powder-coated version. Most people uh, have never seen the BM40T. Uh, if you've even heard of the trainer, you'd probably seen the, the uh, TR, the red version. But anyway, that's what that's all about. So uh, this could have been a whole separate video just on this stuff, but, you know, whatever. Just uh, decided to pop this stuff out. And I'm glad I did this because this is the kind of stuff I want to talk about. I mean, I could talk knives all day long. It really never gets old for me at all. Um, here's a 2004. Benchmade catalog. Here's 2005. Let's go back to five for a second. See if there's anything special in here. Anything worth? Eh, some Griptilians. Same old, same old. Eh. Nothing to float my boat. So, let's see. 2006. <laughs> they went up right now, but they still didn't get it like a normal size. Here's the uh, 32 Morpho, one of my favorite user battle songs as well. Mm, some of them gold class knives. 
with the Damascus blades, Damascus bolster, we got the abalone, you know, inserts, firework on the spine. Look at this in the background. Here's a BM 46 DM, which is the 46, the spear point uh, version of the BM 4X series, okay? But you have a Damascus blade, okay? Highly polished uh, titanium handles with some really nice abalone inserts. Another one I'd give my left nut for. Or maybe my right. You can't have them both. Sorry. Just one at a time. So anyway, that's it. Ooh, the ruckus. I know, I just... This video is going to be long, I know it. Here's a regular 42. I just saw a Benchmade ruckus, which I think is an awesome knife. Come on, where were you? There we go. The 610. Pretty cool. And they had interchangeable scales, too. They had a, a white micarta. That's the version that I had. Um, it was a really sweet knife. Something you just don't see videos on. You really don't. I don't see a whole lot of videos on Benchmates. Uh, on YouTube, it's predominantly Spyderco stuff, and I have nothing, nothing against Spyderco. I think they're a fantastic company, and they certainly make really nice knives. But I like to see more variety. Um, and I, per me personally, own a lot more Spydercos than I do Benchmates, you know, or uh, say Allmars. You know, you see a lot of SOG knives, a lot of Kershaw, a lot of CRKT. A lot of great companies out there, but it's just cool to get a variety. Frost Cutlery. If you know anything about knives, I need not say a word. And some more frost. Some more frost. Special projects. One of these. Ooh, this is like a pinup girl. <laughs> some kids who are like 14, 15, they have like, you know, naked women posters in their bedroom. I never really understood that. I mean, I wouldn't want to advertise my mommy and daddy, uh, my naked pictures. <laughs> That's what the computer is for. And by the way, you kids got it darn lucky. I shouldn't even saying this, but I'm not talking about kids. I'm, I should say adult teenagers. <laughs> but you are extremely lucky to have the internet. I remember the old uh, AOL days, okay, where it took me, you know, 25 minutes to upload a picture. And I, I got to like the knees and then I gave up. Anyway, here's some posters, some knife posters. Some Felchneven. I'm still probably not saying that right after a year. Um, anyway, pretty cool. Here's another one. Ooh, the U2. My favorite. Felchneven <laughs> folder. They make really nice fixed blades too, but I have to say, as nice as they are, I definitely prefer um, Bark River Knife and Tool for a good outdoor general purpose fixed blade. BR, uh, K, and T are definitely some of the best as far as production goes. But their Northern Light series, as we're looking at now, very, very expensive, but really neat fixed blades. I mean, very high quality. So what else we got? Oh man, look at this. Jesus. Mr. Smith had lots of sales and this massive clip thing. I didn't know what you'd use that for. I guess you'd use it for this, wouldn't you? Anyway, don't need that anymore. Another tops. And last but not least, of the bench made. This is a 2002. Jeez, can't believe it's 2011 already. Time flies, isn't it? Ooh, I saw another ballad song. Belly, belly, belly song. Boop, 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 boop. Shoot, boop, boop, boop. Ooh, okay. Here's the stainless uh, 31. You guys know the 31, or excuse me, the 32 Morpho, but you probably have never seen the 31. Now, I know I posted a video at some point on it. I probably had music. It was probably taken down. This is early days. Um, but I had a 31, and I had someone make a custom latch for me, which is a piece of uh, G10, and it had a, a, a titanium bar through it almost like a barbell, and it was one of my favorite user knives. And this is, in fact, the one battle song I use the most. Picture just a, a 42 stubby. That's what, you know, some people call them on blade forms. It was a stubby 42. It was basically a shortened version. It was the three inch blade and exactly like the 42. Titanium handles, you know, uh, milled out, skeletonized, very smooth to flip. These are back in the T-latch days. Ain't talking about no spring latch here. Old school T-latch, it clicked and it clacked and it sang. Music to my ears. It's good stuff. So, oh my God, Bally crazy. Okay, another picture of a 40T. Now here we have the A models, okay? See this in the background, it's kind of a bluish purple hue. Those were the A's. This one happens to be the 42A. A stood for anodized. Now in the background here, the anodized ones are a lot more rare. I mean, it's hard to find even a regular 42, right? But then it's even harder to find the 42As, which are anodized. Then you have the BLKs, which were anodized, or excuse me, they were um, powder coated black. 
Okay, so there's a 42 BLK, you know, there's a 46, a 43, 47, all the blade styles. Um, you'd be very hard pressed to find one of them with the uh, black powder coating. They just didn't make them enough to begin with, and you know, in addition to that, um, they're hard to find. So, very cool. But creme de la creme, over on here, we have the 49, and I'm not sure which one exactly. Here, they're just talking about the 49 series, which was the one with the crisp blade. K-R-I-S. You see that little wavy pattern there? This is the... F it doesn't say which one this is. There was a bunch of them. Very high polished finish on this. This one looks to have some kind of... Eh, I don't want to say Coca Bowl because it's not really that red. Maybe a walnut or something. Some kind of beautiful inserts on there. But that is something wicked. And then a gold, a gold class uh, 42 up top there. So anyway. More Bally Bally Ballys. Bally 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 Bally. Anything else cool in here? Some other stuff. Nothing. Nothing I want to talk about anyway. Alright, so that is one case of my crap. And I gotta tell you guys, I, I have five of these cases and then I have a couple cardboard boxes filled with this stuff. But I'm sure this video is already too long, so I'm gonna stop it here. Hope you guys enjoyed my my little chatter and throwing some stuff away. Who knew that you'd spend your time on the internet watching a stranger throw something out? Can you believe you just watched that? Because that sums it up, folks. You just went on the internet, which you paid good money for, to watch a stranger throw out his garbage. And somehow, it was entertaining. And I'm glad it was entertaining. That's what I'm here for. So thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. And I truly hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.